1885. The Nigerian Senate has adjourned plenary for 14 days to enable the lawmaker proceed on Salah break. President of the Senate, Hamad Lawa, who made the announcement on the floor of the chamber, said the break will last two weeks, commencing from May 6 to May 18, 2021. He, however, said the upper chamber will be holding committee meeting during the break. Lawa added that on the resumption from the break, the Senate will receive report from its Committee on Petroleum Industry Bill and Electoral and Art Amendment Bill for consideration. The sixth day of May, the Senate will adjourn for the Salah break and the Senate will resume on the 18th of this month and that will be a Tuesday. Before the 18th, we expect that our committees will still be working, particularly our committee, the Joint Committee, working on the Petroleum Industry Bill. We expect that the Joint Committee will be presenting its report to the Senate as soon as we resume. It is still our desire, our design and determination to pass the petroleum industry bill before the end of May by the grace of God. Ditto our committee on INEC, we still have to do some little work and we hope to pass the Electoral Act Amendment before we go on summer recess. Other committees, particularly, again, our committee on constitutional review, headed by the Deputy President of the Senate, has designed zonal interactions with our constituents, Nigerians. We also expect that they will be able to complete their work as soon as possible for the Senate and the House uh, to vote on the issues and, of course, send our report to the 36th State House of Assembly. I am sure that during our recess between now and 18th, we will still be doing one form of legislative intervention or the other, as, either as individuals or maybe as groups, because ours is a full-time job, and the parliament and parliamentarians are always the first point of call when there's distress. Nigerians will always remember National Assembly or National Assembly members as soon as something happens. We'll continue to be available to our constituents. We should continue to be alive to our responsibilities, and we should continue to do our best. With this, the Senate is adjourned till Tuesday, the 18th day of May, 2021, at 10 a.m. prompt. Meanwhile, President of the Senate, after the closed door section meeting, which lasted more than four hours, failed to disclose the outcome of their meeting with the head of security agencies. But they are in the station that their meeting will border on new strategy and fund to prosecute the insecurity challenges in Nigeria. On behalf of all the services, that is Chief of Army staff, Chief of Naval staff, Chief of Air staff, and Director General National Intelligence Agency, National Intelligence Agency, NIA, no, Defense Intelligence Agency, on their plans of continuing containing the present insecurity situation in the country. Thereafter, they answered questions from the Sungu senators bordering on security, insurgency, terrorism, kidnapping, and other topical national security matters of interest to the parliament. Is this a true reflection of what transpired in, a close, in the closed session? Thank you very much.
Nigerian Minister of Finance, Zenab Hamed, has debunked military claim of having outstanding 50 billion naira of funds being withheld by the ministry, adding that 100% releases have been made to the military since 2019. The minister stated this at a special session before the Senate Committee on Army. This is coming against the backdrop of a letter from the military that 50 billion naira men to fund Operation Lafayette Dule added during Daggy and Thunderstrike are yet to be dispersed. Hamed said 100% releases have been made of the fund meant for the military to cover capital, overhead, and personal costs. The minister added that owing to the urgency of the security situation, a ministry have resorted a certain fund from the service-wide vote exceeding the fund originally appropriated for the military. Details of releases to the Nigerian Army from service-wide votes from January 2019 to April 2021. The first part of it, the year 2019, for Operation Lafia Dole, what was budgeted was 75 billion, but we ended up having to release up to 82.61 billion. Having released the 75 billion in the budget, there was an augmentation from service wide special intervention of 7.61 billion. So that, this represents about 110% over the budget. Then, um, we, I have uh, in that same schedule a breakdown of the components of Operation Lafia Dole, the Nigerian Army of the 82.619 million Nigerian Army uh, got a component of 35.61 billion representing 40%, while the defense headquarters got 25%, and the uh, armed uh, Nigerian Air Force got 20, 21%. Then below, Below this uh, breakdown for Operation Lafia Dole is details of some of the extra budgetary funding that uh, Mr. President gave special approvals for, and there's a total of 12.422 billion, which was also fully funded and released to the Nigerian Armed Forces. There was also a, pro, uh, a special provision for Operation Kadar and Daji and Thunderstrike, Operation Thunderstrike. A specific request that was made by the Ministry of uh, 2.2 Five four billion was released on the approval of uh, His Excellency the President in the year 2020. For Operation Lafia Dole, what was in the budget was 75 billion naira, and uh, 75 74.99 billion naira was released in 2020. So that means also 100% releases. Um, we have uh, just below that a breakdown of the makeup of the 74.99 billion, still showing that the Nigerian army benefited 46% uh, at 34.64 billion of the 75 billion that was expended for Operation Lafia Dole. In the year 2020 for Operation Lafia Dole, what we have done so far is to pay for, to pay for two quotas because we pay uh, the quotas in advance. Uh, 19.79 billion for each quarter, so we have re we, we released so far 39.72 percent for quarter one and quarter two on Operation Life Now, just to explain, when you look at the details, you find that the request is made to the Ministry of Defence by the Defence uh, Headquarters, and they detail out how each of these um, uh, funds is going to be used. So it's initiated by the Ministry by the defense, it goes to the president, he approves, we release what is based on what is approved. We don't have any view of the actual utilization of this. What we are doing is releasing the funds. In a rather strange twist, the member of the committee, Senator Chris Epoyong, urged the media not to report the seeming sorry state of Nigerian military. So in reporting, you must also show patriotism. You don't have to report everything verbatim. By letting the world know that you know we uh, that we are short change or in one form or other that we don't have adequate um, equipment to fight the insurgency, so that you don't actually ginger the insurgents and the Boko Haram to say after all the Nigerian army don't have sufficient you know, fire brand, you know power to, to face them. So please know what you report, Mr. Chairman. That is what I wanted to. State, so they should show patriotism in their reportage. Thank you. Elders, elder, as he said, we are all in this together. Security is everybody's business. Uh, the sensation normally caused by our, our press sometimes goes out of 
patriotism is, is on, you can even say it's unpatriotic. So please, say those things that will help in improving the security of this country and not those things that will compound our problem again. And having said that, I want you to excuse the press and the other staff that accompany the service chiefs, please. Uh, you know the importance of this matter is not that we don't want you in, but there is the need for us to do this in a secure environment. In a close session. The service chief were absent at the session, which is shortly afterward reverted to a closed door session. Against the PDP Senate caucus allegation that President Buhari is not in charge of security, the APC caucus of the Senate says President Buhari is in full control of the present administration. Addressing the press after the caucus meeting in Abuja on behalf of other members, Senate Majority Leader Senator Abdullah Yahya noted that the caucus is worried that the minority coup be playing with lives of Nigerians, saying our opposition have gone too far in their criticism. Senator Abdullah maintained that President Buhari, service chief and head of other security agencies, are meeting on the matter of security challenges with the plea that people should be patient. He accused that the past administration failed to invest in the security of the country. We take exception to the unfortunate charge that our president has not been seen. This is false and cheap politics. Mr. President and the, service, and the service chiefs are meticulously busy every day and every night in deliberations and actions with a view to addressing the security challenges across the entire country. Similarly, Mr. President had always made statements to Nigerians on all major security incidences and assuring Nigerians and indeed the international community that he's on top of the game and that he will continue to do his best in making sure that the security challenges are tackled head on. We want to assure Nigerians that Mr. President is in charge of the government and is discharging his duties conscientiously and patriotically. It is a well-known fact that the federal government under the PDP refused to invest in the security infrastructure of the country while Mr. President under the APC-led government had massively invested in this regard, more than any other past government, including the military. And we are confident that the nation will surmount its current security challenges. Furthermore, it must be noted that the global economy is in turmoil, triggered by a COVID-19 pandemic, and Nigeria is not an exception. The federal government is aware of the challenges and is working assiduously to massively get the economy working for Nigerians through agricultural intervention projects, infrastructure development projects, and social interventions to use the pains of the economic downturn on ordinary Nigerians. On the economy, Senator Abdullah said the bleeding economy in the world is occasioned by the COVID-19, which he said is not only affecting Nigeria. According to him, APC caucus of the Senate reject and disassociate themselves from all and any inflammatory statement to appear to threaten the authority of President Buhari and the party. We are concerned, furthermore, that the statement issued by the minority caucus is capable of overheating an already charged polity in which men of good conscience and patriotism are expected to act as leaders and statesmen. While we acknowledge the natural disposition of playing politics, we are worried and disturbed that our colleagues are playing with the lives of our people. The unfortunate state of insecurity for which the Senate has continuously debated and issued resolutions jointly worked with the members of the minority caucus to support the actions of the executive arm of government under the leadership of Muhammadu, President Muhammad Buhari in the overriding public interest of Nigerians is too delicate 
to play with. In all our deliberations, the entire Senate, including the minority, have discussed exhaustively in very robust, transparent, and patriotic flavor to arrive at our concrete resolutions jointly without opposition from members of the minority caucus. A case in point is the current invitation to engage with the service chiefs. The Senate leader also assured Nigerians of good governance with an appeal to the citizen and international community that the rule of law will be followed. Creative industry in Nigeria has begun to grow in leaps and bounds thanks to private sector who started looking at industry for collaboration in order to grow the industry. Multi-talented and Nigerian international award-winning artist Dapo Oyebanji, popular known as Dibanj, is one of many who have chosen to give back to the rising and upcoming creative talent in Nigeria with his initiative known as the CREAM platform, which acronym CREAM stands for Creative, Reality, Entertainment, Art and Music. The CREAM platform provides creative minds the opportunity to win among the following recording a standard song, shooting standard video, collaboration with artists of their choice, talent showcase, talent branding, promotion and marketing, and entrepreneurship grant, educational scholarship, sport trail, etc. In its quarterly draw that took place at the Federal Palace Hotel in Lagos. On 30 April, the Coco Masaria firm is believed in creative industry and urge the youth to make use of the platform so that they can showcase their talent and be discovered. The winner of the quarterly draw, 16-year-old Barry with EP Oil on My Head, won 2 million naira and Coco Massa promised he will also get the right support and exposure that will take him to the next level. Uh, congratulations, Barry. Um, Thank you. You're a musician. And um, you have uploaded your song in um, in need of the service of music video, and I also found out that you have an EP which is also ready. So once a quarter, once a quarter, we'll pick one merit winner every quarter so that we can help propel the person through the quarter, and we've set aside a budget that we'll use to push. So for Barry, he's going to get one music video paid for wow. by us, wow. and then he's going to get sponsorship. All in the amount of about 10 million naira. Wow. That's what I get right now. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. I have to crown it up for him. The 10 million naira invested in his career and his business, there's no way you can release or maximize the potential of an artist without having the right management True. and the right booking agent. True. And so, in, in addition to that, we've signed a cream platform, I signed a partnership with the legendary list entertainment. Wow, wow. And he has agreed to manage wow. Barry, so wow. Barry automatically has management on the list entertainment. Wow. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank Barry in his response said he was excited, happy to be part of the Cream platform, and narrated how the whole process started before it was announced the overall winner. I feel really very happy. Yeah, I feel very happy to be here, an opportunity to be here. He yeah, actually um, composed this song and um, how I did this song, I was just at home and then I came, I came home and met my producer playing this beat and my manager was like, I am very see beat they play now, we will just drop on this, on this beat then um, it didn't take much time then I wrote on the beat and then uh, composed the song then few, day, few, day, few days after I was going through my Instagram post, I'm always online and I saw the band posting Queen Platform. I saw Queen Platform post and um, some hours like after after watching it on Instagram, I just saw a message from my manager, bro, um, send me your video, let's upload it on the Queen platform. platform. Yeah, and um, after that I just slept on it and um, the other day I saw I saw Queen Platform posting they are going to announce their winner. I was like, Oh, did you feel? That night, I was like, I was nervous. Like, what's oh, going to happen? Oh, each now we go, we don't go. I was just there, and then the next day, I got the call from Cream Platform that I'm the winner. Yeah. I, 
Ale ja som tu tapi. Some of the stakeholders at the draw commended the effort of the bunch to give the platform to young talent Nigeria to exert. Cream platform is supported by Heritage Bank and other like minds Nigeria. Some of the notable artists on the Cream platform include Wandy Cole, Ari Song and Ice Prince.